Joshua Grandmaster Clotty, born Accra, Ghana, and a resident of the Bronx, New York, USA, five foot eight with a 70 inch reach, 44 fights, 39 wins, 22 by knockout, only losing four fights. Clotty, keeping the high guard stance, having big, thick arms, he was a true welterweight. In the beginning of his career, he fought at welterweight back in the year 1995 against Samuel Lutzu. In fact, he started at junior welterweight. He would go on a number of fights later to win the Ghanan super lightweight title, also known as the junior welterweight title. He would move on to win other local titles until he faced Carlos Baldemir, November 29th, 1999. Joshua Claudi was losing the fight and he was disqualified for persistently using his head. However, it must be noted that in this fight you could see the elements of Joshua Claudi's style. Using the high guard defense, he would ward off just about every punch to the head and to the body. Having big, strong, long arms, he was able to shell up. After coming out of his shell, he could just about do any offensive shot. From Lee rights, to straight jabs, uppercuts, and hooks, Claudie's resume of shots was exhausted. After his loss to Carlos Baldemir in 1999, he would go on a streak of wins, beating Ike Obi for the African Boxing Union welterweight title. He would move on to fight a number of other welterweights, notably beating Christopher Henry for the NABC welterweight title. He would go on to win against Marcos Primera, December the 3rd, 2005. His shot at the welterweight title was against Antonio Margarito, December 2nd, 2006. This fight was a to and fro fight. Antonio Margarito warming up in the later rounds and throwing shots. But Joshua Claudi equal to the task and arguably winning the fight. But at the end of the day, on the judges' scorecards, they had Antonio Margarito having a unanimous decision win to continue retaining his world welterweight title. He would go on one fight later to face Diego Corrales, who was moving up from lightweight to fight Joshua Claudio at welterweight. April the 7th, 2007. In that fight, Joshua Claudio was able to overcome Corrales in a neck and neck competition when he dropped him in the ninth round. He would proceed in the final round of the fight to knock down Diego Corrales yet one more time. He would go on to fight a number of other notable fights at welterweight, finally getting another opportunity to win a world title against Zab Judah, vying with him for the vacant IBF world welterweight title, August 2nd, 2008. He would go on to defeat Zab Judah and take the IBF World Welterweight title. One fight later, he faced Miguel Cotto, June 13th, 2009. In that fight versus Miguel Cotto, Joshua Kaladi was knocked down in round one after doing some good work against Miguel Cotto to lose the round. Cotto would later on be cut above his eye though Claudi came on strong and was landing the majority of punches. As the fight progressed, Claudi was slammed to the ground by Miguel Cotto, but not penalized. He had to go on in the fight with a damaged leg. You could argue that he won that fight against Miguel Cotto, but the judges didn't see it that way. Giving Miguel Cotto a split decision win over Joshua Claudi. Claudi would go on the next fight to face Manny Pacquiao, March 13th, 
2010. In that fight, Cluddy was very defensive, creating no offense whatsoever. And so, by default, giving Manny Pacquiao every single round of the fight. In the end, he lost by unanimous decision to Manny Pacquiao. He would go on to face a number of other opponents at a higher weight class, super welterweight. He would also fight at middleweight, two fights after the Pacquiao fight against Calvin Green and Dashaun Johnson. He would win the WBA International Super Welterweight title. It is still yet to be seen how the closing chapters of Joshua Kaladi's career will unfold. Until then, you guys have a great day.